having said to Kate right in the beginning, yes, your knee could well be actually inflamed because your pain system is sensitized. She then jumped straight to the most important bit was, okay, cool. If that's the case, how can I make it better? <laughs> you know, is there a way to make it better? And um, the answer is, uh, uh, it's sort of yes, dot, 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 because um, so there are some choices that she could use or any of you, if you have an area where, where, you, where you have ongoing inflammation and swelling in an area which is inappropriate, the, um, there are a number of substances which we now know interfere actually with neurogenic inflammation. And the first substance which interferes is something called capsaicin or capsaicin. And this, is, this comes from the red hot chili pepper. It is the most counterintuitive medicine I know of because capsaicin, you know, red hot chili pepper, hot, <laughs> hot. And when you take capsaicin, it is actually the active components, the bit that burns. With capsaicin, um, if you rub capsaicin on an area where there is neurogenic inflammation, initially it makes things much worse. But if you keep rubbing it on, so use the smallest concentration possible, and you, uh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'll just go a step back. The receptors that live on the nerve endings of the C fibers and the autonomic fibers, those little receptors, um, they're actually stimulated by capsaicin. Again, that, so it makes it so capsaicin initially will make the inflammatory process worse. But if you keep applying it, and quite how they found this out is beyond me, because the moment you make something worse, you would, you'd think people would stop, but they didn't. They continued on, and what they found is after four to six weeks of regular use, the amount of inflammatory substances, especially the main inflammatory substance, substance P, starts to reduce, and in fact, the capsaicin itself seems to mop up the amount of substance P. So one of the, uh, the, the, the treatments is in fact to use capsaicin cream over the area at a very small concentration. And initially you put it on, wash it off, put it on, wash it off, gradually increase the length of time you put it on, and then you increase the concentration of capsaicin. So that's the first treatment that seems to interfere with neurogenic inflammation. The second is we know that the autonomic system is malfunctioning and that the autonomic system is actually part of those, those little um, sympathetic autonomic nerve endings are producing um, uh, part of the inflammatory soup. And so it has been found that a group of medications called alpha blockers, which are the which are uh, substances that reduce the activity of autonomic fibers, they will actually interfere with neurogenic inflammation. And the most appropriate for an area, so for her knee, what you use is something called clonidine. So I'll write all these, uh, you know, I'll write all these down in, 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 a, in, in a post. And clonidine comes as a patch, a very high tech patch. Um, which is slowly released over a week. So you stick the patch on and you then you have the substance moving because your skin's just another membrane. It goes, it's released from the little um, package in the patch and it's released at a very particular rate of a hundred millionth of a gram per day. <laughs> so it's released very, very slowly and goes into the area and blocks the autonomic overreaction and and it reduces the underlying neurogenic inflammation so that's another excellent choice and both of these are um, superb choices because you're not putting something in your mouth with all its attendant side effects you're putting something onto the area 
which goes in in fairly low dose has a local effect. Then Botox. Botox reduces uh, neurogenic inflammation. Uh, and Botox, come, each of these, of course, comes with its own uh, attendant problems. One other really interesting um, substance is magnesium. And one of the things that actually turns on neurogenic inflammation is magne lack of magnesium. So lack of magnesium is one of the factors that turns on those receptors, which turns on the inflammatory process from the nerve endings. So increasing the amount of magnesium may not only reduce sensitivity of nerves, but reduces inflammation produced by nerves. Very interesting substance, magnesium. And then an incredibly unusual one, which is the, which totally surprised me because I didn't know this, and that is statins. Substances that are, that are used to lower cholesterol also interfere with the, this was found as a total by the by, that statins reduce neurogenic inflammation. And so low dose statins are starting to be used in inflammatory processes. So that is, um, uh, and then Kate, for all the, uh, once the, the process has been turned on, then um, um, all the other anti-neuropathic treatments, things like gabapentin and pregabalin and duloxetine and so on, all these, all these medications that are used for, for grumpy nerves will reduce to some extent um, neurogenic inflammation. But the, the ones I've talked about before, they are specifically designed or not, their action is that they interfere with neurogenic inflammation. 